Welcome to my channel. Today I will speak on a very important and valuable tree called red chandras, commonly known as Rakta Chandan red chandalwood. Scientific name is Tyrocropus centralinus. Belongs to family Fabiaceae. It is a moderate deciduous tree which can attain 10 to 12 meter height, 1.5 to 1.9 meter girth, with clean bowl of 4.5 to 6 meter in national forest. Its bark looks like crocodile skin, and if we cut a portion of its bark, a red colored gum oozes out. The yellow flowers appear during April May, but pods take about uh, 10 months to mature. Pollination takes place by honeybees. It is an endemic species restricted to southern parts of Eastern Ghats, mainly found in forests of four hill ranges, including Sesasalam in Andhra Pradesh state. Only in about 5.83 lakh hectare in the districts of Kadapa, Nelur, Chitur, and Prakasam. Also, it occurs partly in Tamil Nadu in the districts of Tiruvallur, Kanchipuram, Bhelur, Tiruvannamalai, and Dharmapuri. It is also reported to occur in few forests in Godavari district of Odisha. The species was introduced in Mondia district of Karnataka state, where it has naturalized in a small forest area. Red chandras is also found in Sri Lanka and Pakistan due to introduction from India. Red chandras prefers hot and dry climate, low rainfall, about 500 to 800 mm. It comes up well in natriuretic and gravelly soils, but not in waterlogged soils. It is a light demander, excellent capisher, more resistant to fire, but it cannot tolerate frost. Let us look on its global conservation status. Presently, red chandras is categorized as endangered species in IUCN list mainly due to its occurrence in restricted geographical areas in a limited extent. It's a declining population because of continual illegal harvest. Red chandras has also been listed in Appendix 2 of CITES, that is Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, since 1995 as it requires strict regulation on its trade for its survival. As far as its uses are concerned, red sanders wood is very heavy, strong, strength-wise more than thick and extremely durable. Also highly polishable, suitable for carving and turning. Traditional designs can be finely engraved on it to make classical luxury furnitures. Wavy grain red sanders wood is very valuable and is exported mainly to Japan for making a musical instrument called Shamichan, probably due to its superior acoustic quality. Straight grain, that is non-quality wood, is used to make toys, idols, etc. The hardwood contains 16% red santalin dye, which is used as natural dye to color herbal mixtures, toothpaste, preserving natural colors of foodstuff, flavoring alcoholic beverages, in dyeing clothes, etc. Red chandas wood, including sips, powder, brick, briquettes, and other products, are traded in the international market at a very high price, generally exported to China, Japan, and Western Europe. As medicinal uses in India, the hardwood and its bark is used in the treatment of diabetes, cough, fever, digestive tract problem, skin diseases, jaundice snake bite, etc. Wood powder is also used as skin care and cosmetic purposes. Now let us discuss about its cultivation and propagation. The great advantage of growing red centers is that it is one of the most valuable tree species can be grown in hot and dry climate, in less rain, on poor soil, barren land, where other valuable tree species generally fail to grow. However, in rich soil, it can grow up to 15 to 18 meter height 2.5 meter girt with 9 meter clear bowl. Hence, the species can be planted not only in its native range of natural recurrence, but also in other areas having similar growing conditions. Red centers is commonly propagated by seeds as vegetative propagation has its own limitations to produce large number of required seedlings. However, vegetative matters can be adapted to produce superior quality clones with traits like high hardwood content wavy grain, straight bowl, etc. Dry pots from trees are collected in January, February. Seeds are, along with the wings are sown in mother beds. Seeds' viability period is only about 8 months. 
Seed germination takes about 14 to 53 days and germination percentage varies from 10 to 80 percent. Soaking of seeds in water for 48 hours followed by soaking in 500 ppm zeolic acid for 12 hours will enhance germination percentage as well as it will reduce germination period. Presently, two years old stump based seedlings are commonly used for planting. Seedlings can be planted at 4 meter spacing in 45 centimeter cube or 60 centimeter cube pits depending on size of seedlings. One should procure superior quality seedlings from known sources only for better performance. Presently, commercial varieties of road centers are not available. Forestry College and Research Institute Metropolitan of Tamil Nadu Agriculture University identified a clone called TNRS1 and reported that it can grow up to 12 meter height and more than 60 centimeter girth within 15 years. The hardwood content and wood density is influenced by age and size of trees. About 30 percent hardwood content can be expected from the harvestable stem volume. In the initial years, pruning of side branches should be done to prevent forking to get quality timber. In nascent forest, seedlings start hardwood formation at about 18 years age when attain girth of 15 to 23 centimeter. Generally, higher age trees give more girth and hardwood. So, in my opinion, ideal harvest age of red centers for higher economic returns may be between 30 to 40 years. It may be little lesser also depending on size quality and other factors. Though it is long gestation period but is highly remunerative on long term basis, farmers should plant red centers as long term investment in affordable areas along with other short duration crops for regular income. Future demand of red centers would will be only from private plantations. There are only about 5,000 hectare red center plantations in South India. Government of India is encouraging large scale plantation of these valuable species, which will help to create better livelihood opportunity, income generation, and also will help in its conservation. From the analysis of global auction sale of seized red centers logs done by Andhra Pradesh government during the last three years, average price per metric ton varied from about 20 lakh to 42 lakhs, depending on gradation of logs based on quality. Lastly, let us discuss about its present trade policy. At present, as per government policy in India, export of red centers, wood, especially from government sources, is prohibited except under special circumstances. Legal trade is only confined to occasional sale of sea timber available in different states and union territories in India. Due to intrusion of red centers in Appendix 2 of CITES, its international trade is under strict regulations. In 2012, India got an export quota from CITES for exporting 11,806 metric tons of wood from seized sources and 310 metric tons from cultivated sources. Andhra Pradesh state got major quota of 8,584 metric tons followed by Tamil Nadu 299.7 metric tons, Karnataka 186.6 metric tons and Maharashtra got 83.4 metric tons. Recently, in last October, Orissa got permission for 810 metric tons for cyclone affected foreign trees. It is good for the farmers that central government relaxed the trade policy by DGFT, that is Director General of Foreign Trade Notification, on 18th February 2019, which allowed to export red centers in log farms, roots, and value added produces if it is purely sourced from cultivation origin obtained from private land, including Pata land. As per the procedure to get export permit, the private party, that is applicant, has to take the certificate of origin and stock certificate from the state forest department and thereafter need to apply to the DGFT on online commerce website in prescribed forms along with required documents. There are 24 regional offices under DGFT in different states to facilitate the process. 
The quantity of red sandals wood and its pro products exported from cultivated sources is still negligible due to cumbersome procedure to get export permit. Further simplification in procedures will encourage the farmers to grow red sandals more. Sustainable trade policy in this regard needs to be formulated by incorporating the stakeholders' perceptions. At the same time, domestic market of red sandals need to be improved. At the end, I'd like to mention that our endeavor at all levels should be to protect, conserve, grow and sustainably use this valuable tree species. Thank you very much.